Hello everyone, welcome to Cousin Jack Carves. I wanna let you know every 90 days I give away one of my carvings to a subscriber. So please subscribe, hit the notification, make sure you're getting notified when we have a new video. So snowman number one will be the first carving I'll give away. If you are subscribed before New Year's Day, January 1st, 2021, you'll be in the running for the drawing on snowman number one. And then every 90 days you'll be in there for another giveaway. Let me show you some options in terms of these carvings, all right? So I showed you snowman number one plenty of times. This is snowman number two, an ornament. You can see the hollowed out back that makes it lighter for hanging on the tree. And uh, some of the variations here for the scarf. Scarf is different. The hat has a little bit of holly on there. And then there's snowman number three. Again, another variation. This is a freestanding figurine but you can see that I've carved in some folds on the front of that scarf. And then again, different hat band and the holly. You can have fun with these things, put all kinds of different looks on them, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. So let's get started with part four. So we're gonna get rolling here in a minute. I just wanted to take a second and show you some blade covers that I made. Um, I had a a viewer who uh, who made a comment and said, you know, I'd really like to get a closer look at those blade covers when you have a chance. And so uh, here you go, cousin. I've got some blade covers that I made here. And these were inspired from um, examples that I saw by Donald Mertz. He has a blog and it's called wouldbecarver.com. That's wood as in W-O-O-D, B as in a honeybee, B-E-E, -E, carver. Dot com. So check out Donald Mertz, check out his blog. Now this is the first one I made. Uh, you can see there's no eyes showing there. Uh, on the others that I made, I uh, gave myself a little clue. Whichever direction they're looking, that's where the sharp edge is. Uh, you, you definitely want to know where the sharp edge is when you're taking off your blade cover. Okay, so there you go. Um, quick look at some blade covers. They're fun to make. Scrap wood and, and you're all set. Okay, let's get rolling. We're gonna be wrapping up this carving today, and then I'll talk you through the steps I use for finishing. First thing we're gonna do is, well, hang on just a second. One other thing I wanted to show you, and I said I would. This is the book from Mike Shipley with uh, this particular snowman and a number of other carvings in it. Uh, there are quite a few patterns that you can get from this book. It's uh, published by Fox Chapel. And this, uh, this version of it that I have was published in the year 2000. Um, so yeah, I recommend it. Um, check it out. Okay, so first we're going to do is kind of shape this face. We want to make sure we have some room here to put in that mouth and get those eyes in. Of course, we'll be shaping that nose as well. So yeah, let's get rolling with that. I'm going to just come down here and you can see the um, the profile the chin area sticks out further than where the eyes will be that's fine um, what I'll probably look for here is some sort of an angle about like this going back so let's just start here at the bottom of the face kind of bring that up a little bit to that nose area And I really want to thank everybody for their comments and their encouragement. It's uh, been very helpful to me. This is kind of a new thing for me, and it's, uh, it's really just my attempt at giving back and sharing what I know. I figure if you can learn uh, what has taken me decades to learn, <laughs> all the better. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so we're getting that, that mound here. And you can see I'm taking some smaller cuts here. I don't want to have this large facet in the middle of the smile. Right? You can do yours however you want. I'm just saying uh, this, is, this is the look I'm going for. And you can already see there's a sort of a flatter area here. It doesn't have any facets sort of in the middle of it. Now I'm gonna just come up the side of that face next to the nose. Wanna give us some room here 
for the eyes and to get them shaped in. And we're going to give this snowman some personality today. One of the other things I, I really want to say is that, you know, the comments and, and uh, pictures that I've seen of, of the carvings that everyone's doing uh, is great. I really enjoy that. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. Okay, we're going to continue to give us some room for the eyes there. So one thing that will give us some more room is kind of shaping this nose and then also trimming back this hat. You can see we have a lot of hat going on here and we haven't done much with the front of this hat at all. So what I'll do here, first of all, is just take off this corner. We do not need that. We don't want a pointy hat. We want it to be rounded anyway. You know, and you can look down from the top and you can see just how pointed that is in the front. And that's not the look we're going to be going for in the end. So we're just going to take some off the front, round it back a little bit. This will help us when we're trying to get those eyes set in place. Well, and it will also help us to get the hat looking the way we want it. I still have bandsaw marks on the front of this hat. That's because we really have not touched that. And I mentioned early on the reason we haven't touched that is once we start that brim and we get the hat brim cut in, that's probably the most fragile part of your carving, with the exception maybe of the nose, and that depends on how thick you, you cut that nose. All right, so I'm going to come underneath that hat brim and cut that back in. Again, giving ourselves some more room for those eyes and the face. And this also cleans up some of the cuts we've been making all along, which we haven't touched, and for a good reason. Uh, it just wasn't time yet. Okay, we've already given ourselves some, some more room there. That's good. I'm happy. You don't need to worry about detailing your hat yet. We're, we're going to get there. That'll be coming later. Okay. Let's do a little shaping on this nose. But before that, actually I'm going to I'm going to bring the top edge of this mouth back some. Still not happy with the angle. I want to get more material out from underneath that nose. You know, it's an important thing to do is look at your carving from different angles so you can get an idea of where you are with the profile. Sometimes it's even good to look at your carving upside down. It gives you a different perspective, and sometimes what you'll see is something that's maybe asymmetrical that you had not intended. So I encourage you to just really look at it. Okay. Okay, now I've got that angle that I was looking for coming from the sort of bottom of the chin all the way to the top of the face. So with the nose, I mentioned before that the, the nose is broader at the base than it is at the point. You can see if we look from this angle on snowman number one just how fat that nose is at the base. And that's what we're looking for. When we cut that nose in, we're not going straight back from the point. You can also see from this angle how broad it is at the base. So when we cut that in, we're going to be angling back not going straight back, okay? So on this nose, right now you can see we just got this kind of roughed out shape. But what I'm going to do is just draw in four little angles, little 45 degree angles here as a guide, okay? Kind of like that. Now 
Now for me, I'm going to start up here at the tip. Remember, I'm going to angle it back, okay? All right, then I'll come down and cut this angle. Go over to the other side. And then finally, this one over here. Okay, we're already getting some shape to that nose. Pretty easy, right? Alrighty. Now I'm going to come to the bottom, or actually close to the center. When we get to the top here, the point of the nose, I'm coming close to the center. I'm going to angle my blade like this and cut it back towards the bottom. Then I'm going to come to the top, again, near the center of that point, angle upward and cut it back. Yeah. That was not a good cut. Let's try that one again. That's better. All right. So at this point, I'm looking at the sides, and I want to make the sides a little nicer and shape them. I'm going to come from the point of the nose over to the side. And then on the other side, same thing, from the point of the nose, back. Yep, I'm gonna trim off some more on this side of this nose. And the thing about making, uh, making features like this nose you want to take your time, think through each cut before you make it. Because once you've made it, like I said before, there's really no going back, is there? All right, so I'm getting to the point where I'm pretty happy with the overall shape. I'm just taking a little bit off of that top there. I'm going to start cutting in around the base a little bit. Now take that knife, angle that cut around the base. Like so. And then remove some of that material around that stop cut we just made. Just like that. Now we have to be gentle. Um, again, this is sort of a fragile part of the face, this nose. And we're just kind of cleaning it up right now. And when we get to the eyes, I'm going to give you three different options for making those eyes. Each one has a little bit different level of difficulty to it and a different look, really, when you get down to the end. But I want you to have options. I want you to uh, have choices, you know? And, I mean, there are options even beyond the ones that I'll talk about, so plenty of things you can do. Okay. So we've got that nose kind of shaped. Now with the eyes, I'm still wanting to get a little bit more room at the top. So I'm gonna bring that brim back a little bit more. There's still a lot of material up here for the hat. Got plenty of room to spare. And I want the eyes to have room because they really do kind of make the personality on a piece, don't they?
one of the things that I'll show you with these eyes, they have a little bit of a downward angle, a little slope to them. Um, that again, adds to the look and the personality. Again, just coming back with that brim. This is one of those reasons why we didn't work on this hat brim any earlier. Can you imagine? And this happens with a lot of new carvers. Um, they go ahead and do the hat first. Can you imagine trying now to make adjustments for the space for the eyes after having finished the hat? That'd be a chore. It would cause a, a lot of recarving, I think. All right, we're getting to be uh, where I want to be here. Okay, so generally speaking, the eyes on our snowman have a very slight downward slope to them that you can see here. Now these are very simple because they were made with a gouge. And if you have a gouge, by all means, take your gouge, gouge out one side, and gouge out the other, you've got eye sockets. And then you just paint in the, uh, the little black circle and the little white circle. Pretty simple to do. We're using a knife. Again, the premise is you may not have other tools. So I want to give you options and show you what those options are and how to simulate these eye sockets without a gouge. All right? So the first option that you have, right, I would simply take my knife, I would do the uh, upside down eye first. I would start probably at the uh, edge of that nose here and just go like that. Now we we'll come back at it from the other direction. Take a teeny little slice out of there. Another option would be to take a wood burning pen and make those little eye slits. You take your choice, you can do it with a V tool if you have a V tool. And again, if you have a gouge, use that gouge and go ahead and make your uh, eye sockets. So the next option, and the one that I think many of you might choose, is to go ahead and, and carve in those eye sockets with a, a more angled approach. So to do this, Again, I'm going to start with the upside down eye. If you're right handed, that will be the right eye. If you're a lefty like me, that's the left eye. I'm going to make a little cut, a little sort of a circular cut right side up here. Kind of around. See that circle, semicircle? Then I'm going to turn that upside down. Going to put the tip of my knife and slice it down in there, get it good and deep. And I'm going to angle down, get that slope I'm looking for. And as I go, I'm bringing that knife tip out, okay, very gradually, just like that. Then I come at it from the bottom. Again, I'm going to get that tip of the knife down in there, and I'm bringing it down the slope and taking that tip out as I go. You can see it coming out. And there you go. You've got yourself an eye socket. Now it's pretty easy to get in here and just clean up some of those little areas that you can see where the uh, the knife didn't, the blade didn't exactly meet underneath that. Okay? You can clean that up with just a tip of your knife and just get back in there and then you can have an eye socket there and then make one on the other side 
And again, that starts with that circular cut. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably leave a good um, eighth of an inch between the two eyes here. Okay? I want to have a nice area there of separation between those eyes. And I'm going to start up here again and make that little circular cut. There you go. And guess what? Your eyes may not be symmetrical. Most humans are not. <laughs> so why would a snowman be symmetrical? Don't worry about it. Okay? Because this one now already looks higher than the other one. Now I can, I can adjust that, right, and bring it down lower. I'm just saying, don't worry about it. Okay? Now, for this one, it's hard to get in here with the blade of that knife. I'm going to get that tip in there. And again, I'm going to angle downward and let that tip kind of feather its way out. Come in from the bottom. Put that tip in good and deep there and then angle, angle, feather. Look at that. All right. Now we're getting somewhere, right? Starting to have some personality. Well, let's get our pencil and give it some more personality. One thing you'll see um, with snowman number one, you can see that the little, uh, the little pupil area here is fairly far up into the eye socket. Okay, it's close to the top. And if you ever really notice, you'll find that a human eye, um, the pupil, you rarely see uh, someone's whole pupil. Most of the time you only see like two thirds of it. The other third is tucked under the top of their top eyelid. All right, so we're gonna just start the pencil in. Some eyes here. I know that it's difficult for you to see here because I'm left-handed. Uh, I'll show it to you, okay? <laughs> now, we need a smile, folks, right? So to get that smile, I go from the outer edge of that eye socket, and I want to bring it here. I'm thinking about where the bottom of that nose is, right? I want to come up a little bit, about a third of the way into the height of that nose, and at the outer edge of the eye socket, I'm just going to draw a small line there. Then I'm going to come down under the center of that nose, and make a mark about right here. Then I'm going to go on the other side over here. Again, outer edge of the eye socket. Try and make it even with this mark as far as the height. So draw a little line right about there. Now we're going to play connect the dots. Okay? We're going to go to the top edge of this line and bring that down. nice and rounded here and we'll just continue that to the top edge of this one or if you want to start at your top edge bring it down are you starting to see that personality that's great right so now yeah I can already see yeah I want to clean this up a little bit um, make this a little rounder right here make my line you know, it's uh, a little hard for me to draw with the glove on, but we'll get there. Now I'm going to show you how to cut in that mouth. It's really easy. And I'll show you snowman number one first. You can kind of see, um, remember those triangle cuts that we used? There's a little triangle on each side of his mouth here. And the rest of it is just a very shallow stop cut that's been sort of undercut. So what I'll do, I'm going to start by making a little bit of a cut down, right there. Same thing on this side, a little bit of a cut going downward, just like that. Next step, I'm going to do the undercut of the mouth itself. So I'm going to get in here with the blade, angle it. And bringing it around from 
from one side to the other. Take your time. Remember, we're not in a hurry. This is not a race. You have to enjoy the journey, folks. It's not about the end result. Enjoy the ride. Now we have that undercut. All we're going to do is take a very shallow cut and just kind of cut up to that. Be very careful. You can snap the top of that mouth without even uh, a minute's notice. So be, be careful when you're doing this cut up or under there, okay? And yeah, you can take the tip of your knife, put it in there, and sort of drag it along. Just peel it up, just like that. It's another method. You can do it either way, whatever, you know, works best for you. We're just taking a small sliver of wood out from underneath there to give it some depth to create that shadow and to make that mouth. Speaking of shadows, I think the sun just went behind a cloud. <laughs> All right. Now, it's best to go in small increments when you're doing this, okay? You can always take more away, but if you get too aggressive on your first try, you can't get that back. You'd have to, you know, reshape the mouth and then start over again. Now, I'm going to do a little triangle cut right here in the corner of the mouth. As I mentioned to you, we, we go in from each angle. We've done this before on the scarf. And I'm going to come up to the corner and pop that out. We'll come over here to the other edge of the mouth. Put the tip of the knife in here. And then we'll do it on the uh, other angle right here. And then we're going to slice, start about right here, slice up to the corner. And we'll get that out. Okay. So we're getting some real personality now with that face. I think it's looking good. We've got the eyes in. We've got the mouth. Now let's move down to this scarf. We have some work to do. First thing we'll do is come around this, this knot and we'll put some stop cuts in. So I'm just going to carve around that pencil line that we made for the knot on this side. Come over to the other side. Do the same thing. It's just going to you know, keep us from carving that knot off when we don't want to. And you see, we do need to make a line going sort of semi-circle across that knot. That's kind of where the two pieces are tucked into one another. So we'll just come across here like that. Come back at it from the other direction. Just kind of making that mark of where the two pieces of scarf are going to be intertwined into that knot. All right. Now we're going to undercut the piece of scarf that's hiding behind the other half of the scarf. Now we already put a stop cut in there quite a while ago. So at this point, we're really just going to come along with the knife and take a sliver out where we have that stop cut. It's kind of curved, right? It's not just a straight line. That's what gives it some character and some realism. And this helps us to add some depth, to add that shadow, to have this one piece of scarf tucked in back behind the other. Now we have that fringe, the tassels down at the bottom of our scarf as well. And what we're going to do is give that some personality too. So first thing we do, we take uh, our knife, come up to where the tassel would start. We're going to scoop that and give it some curvature, okay? Let me just show you. We're gonna be careful not to cut into the other half of the scarf. We're gonna watch where our knife blade is and where the tip is. Just gonna come in here and make a scoop cut like that a few times. And this is a, you know, a skill that you'll practice and you'll learn. 
And we'll come over here to this other half. Kind of do the same thing. Scooping that knife. All right. I want to come back in here and give myself some more separation with that undercut. I want that depth there. I want that shadow. There we go. Now, for the tassels. We're going to cut those in with a knife. However, if you have a V-tool, if you have a wood burner, those will, those will do the job as well. They will absolutely do the job. So I'm going to start over here. It's going to make some small V cuts. And then a, a V cut, I'm just coming at the, uh, at the line. Well, if I had lines penciled in, <laughs> which I did before, right? But I took them out. If you want to, you can draw lines in. You don't have to. You can just kind of eyeball it. And um, the more experience you get, the more comfortable you will be with eyeballing some things. But anyway, angling the knife one direction, making a slice, and then coming back at it from the other direction. And it's hard for you to see. I'm sorry about that one. It's, uh, it's a little difficult to do these fine detail cuts and have my fingers out of the way. But you can see... Right there, you can see now we've got some shadow and some depth for that particular tassel. Move over a little bit, do the same thing, right? Come at it from one direction. And bring your knife blade in. All right. So you can see already we've got a couple of those cut in. They're fairly simple. And the more you do this, um, the easier it's going to be for you. Like I said, if you have a V-tool, you're probably finished already um, because they do this very quickly. And a wood burner, a wood burner, um, you can see what I've done with this, gives you a good look for tassels, and it will absolutely give you some depth. Uh, the wood burner will actually cut into your wood for you. And I'm going to talk about the wood burning that I did in the preparation for snowman number one. Give you an idea all about that. And like I said, all the paint and finish that I used to get the look um, that we have on that particular snowman. After all, that's the idea, right? I want you to be able to uh, replicate that if you want to. I know a lot of folks have their own method of painting and finishing that they like. And by all means, you know, use that. Use your method. All right, so in the interest of time, I'm going to stop cutting tassels. <laughs> I think you get the idea, and you can finish up the tassels on the other side. Um, I do want to have more depth here underneath this edge of the scarf. So I'll take some out. Again, paying attention to where that knife tip is. I don't want to cut into this scarf. And now, let's go ahead and, and get some roundness into this scarf. One of the things I talked about earlier is right now, it's very flat, especially on the front. We haven't done much with that. We went around here and we undercut that. We move, remove some material, so now we're going to have some room to undercut or actually angle cut the top and the bottom to get that rounded. Now, for me, I would naturally start over here. I would angle my knife, you can see that angle, right? And start taking a slice this way. Now, one of the things that I'm aiming for in doing this is to round the top. Now we come back on the bottom edge of that scarf and again, angle my knife and take slices off this way. And automatically, we're getting some rounding already happening there. If I were right-handed, which I'm not, I would start on the other side. I would angle my knife again this way. And I would take slices going like this. By the way, if you ever want to uh, have some fun, try carving with your non-dominant hand. <laughs> That's a trip. 
Okay, I'm just going to continue around the top edge of this scarf with my angled knife and again making some large facets to sort of round off the top edge of that scarf, okay? And in the end, we're going to have a much better looking sort of scarf, much more natural in the fact that it's, it's rounded like a piece of cloth that would be draped over um, the shoulders how that would look or come up to our stop cut that we put in here for the knot come down to the bottom edge of that scarf go around the other direction again rounding and moving our knife as we go okay folks uh, we found out that there was a glitch during some of the recording i just want to show you uh, what i did that did not record all right, so you're not missing out on anything. You saw that I went around the top edge of the scarf, rounded that, back around the bottom edge, right, with the blade angled and rounded that. Uh, the piece that we missed was kind of rounding of this knot. All I did for that was to come up on the top side of it and cut in some facets going back like this, turn it over, do the same thing on the bottom side of that knot just kind of round it I made a few cuts just to get a more sort of an oblong look I didn't want any um, sort of square corners on there and then I did that cut across the center and then came back at it from the other side to take out this this cut and give some depth and show where those two pieces of the scarf are sort of knotted together. And, and that's really it. Uh, fortunately, we were able to find out that um, there was an issue and, and fix it before we continue throughout the rest of the, of the video. So there we go. Now we'll pick up um, with our recording. So you can see we've got the good rounded shape on there on that scarf already. It was pretty easy to do. And what you can do to add some depth is just take the tip of your knife, put it underneath that scarf, and just sort of bring that along underneath. Just like that. See that shadow? And that's a great way to get some depth into your carving. And you would do the same thing along the top edge, right? You would just put the blade in at the tip and just follow along the top edge of the scarf. And you can see that made a shadow already. Again, I'll show you um, how you can get some shadows using wood burning and some other techniques too. We need to work on this knot. Let's round that as well. So we're going to take a uh, look at the top here and just start rounding that off. Giving that the shape that we're looking for when we think about some uh, scars and what that not should look like. Come over to our stop cut that we put in. Kind of undercut there and take that sliver out. If it doesn't pop out the first time, just come back at it. Go to the other side where we have that other stop cut. Come under there and take that sliver out. Again, this is giving us some depth and it makes it look like our scarf is kind of tucked in behind the knot, okay? All right. So we're going to just work on rounding this knot a little bit. Coming up to the top, bringing that down to the front. And we'll get rid of these pencil marks at the same time. And we'll get these pencil marks off this side. 
I hope that you're enjoying this, and I hope that this encourages you to make as many snowmen as you would like. Um, they are a lot of fun. Each one can have its own look. And I'll show you some examples of some other snowmen that I've made that are similar, and you've probably seen them in the photo uh, for this video. Each one is different. They're really easy to sort of customize and add different looks to them. You can also uh, do a snowwoman. And the book that I showed you from Mike Shipley has examples, including a snowwoman, uh, that you'll definitely want to take a look at if you go ahead and uh, decide to purchase the book. Or, you know, use your imagination. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Make your own. Okay. So I think it's time now for us to move up to this hat and get that taken care of. So what we'll do, we'll look at it from the top. All right, I want to bring some of this side in a little bit. That's the good thing about having those reference lines. It kind of lets me know very quickly and very easily where I can shape things to kind of make them a little more symmetrical. And even though our snowman is not absolutely symmetrical and the hat probably you know won't be either i want it to be uh, somewhat symmetrical okay so what we're going to do first is we're going to come down to uh, our bottom edge and we're going to kind of put the blade in and cut it back a little bit okay Rock that knife. Again. All right. We're going to take our knife and just bring that up a little bit. Now, this particular piece of wood is tearing out at the very top. All I got to do is come across the grain a little bit and that takes care of it. Again, rocking that knife, just starting to get the first semblance of that brim, right? Separating the brim from the rest of the hat. And we'll be taking off some of this material as we go. We really have a lot to work with here. because we have not done much with the hat. Okay, looking at it from the side, I like where I am with the top here and then sloping back. I'm, I'm happy with that. Again, I'm just gonna make some very large cuts to remove material on the upper part of the hat. And you can get creative with the hats, right? Uh, you can make a snowman that has a wool cap, for example, right? Doesn't have to be any particular kind of hat. You could put a Santa hat on them. You could go no hat. Um, maybe with a snow woman, you might even use a bow and put a bow on top. So, yeah. Make it your own. Make it the way you like. And enjoy it. Okay. So we're already getting some shape in here. Using these very large kind of scooping cuts. Right? You can also come at it from the top. Put your blade in. Not all the way at the bottom. About, about a quarter or a quarter inch up and then use your paring cut just like this coming all the way around that hat and 
And yeah, you can do a scoop cut from the pairing, pairing cut side too, right? You just put that blade in, scoop it up, just like that. All right, we're very quickly getting ourselves some shape here. I'm going to bring that front back a little bit more. Check out my reference marks. Okay. Now you want to be careful when you're working on this hat. Uh, don't put your thumb on his nose. You may find yourself replacing the nose if that <laughs> happens. Sometimes things break on you, right? And if it breaks, it's not the end of the world. You can fix it. But, um, you know, if you can keep yourself from breaking it, that's all the better. Okay. Yeah, I just want to bring that back in the front a little bit more to get more, more brim sticking out. I'm just scooping that out. Now, like I say, if you have other tools and you want to use your other tools, have at it. I'm using one knife. That doesn't mean you have to. You can use your full arsenal of tools. Okay. Let's see where we are. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to come underneath that brim in the back here. I'm going to start cleaning up some of these cuts. You know, we have a lot of little fuzzy marks from previously when we were working on things. And we can clean that up. It's already looking much better. Now this is an absolutely great area for, say, a, a thumbnail gouge or a bullnose gouge, um, even a even a number three uh, gouge would be flat enough to come in here underneath this hat brim and clean this up the way that uh, that we're doing here with a knife. This is going to help us just kind of locate our edges and clean up these cuts all at the same time. Okay, so what I want to do now is start thinking about this top top of that hat is end grain and cutting on end grain is never easy. You want to have a sharp knife, sharp tool to do that. First thing I'm going to do is just angle my knife. And again, left hand I'm going to go around and make some cuts like that. If I were right handed, right, I would go the other direction and have my knife angled this way. Just like that. Actually, that's so easy, I could probably do this right-handed. Um, funny thing about me, <laughs> I do most things right-handed, um, except carving, eating, and writing. I do those things left-handed I'm because I am left-handed. I just learned to do many things in life right-handed because I was taught by right-handed people. All right, so you can see we've already cut some of that end grain away. Now I'm just going to use a paring cut to get the bandsaw marks off of that top. If you're making cuts across this end grain, 
and you're seeing a lot of little white lines appearing, or you're having a real hard time getting across this end grain, it's just a sign that you, you need to strop your tool, your knife, okay? There we go. That top is done. So I guess we can go ahead and set in our hat band. Now you don't have to have a hat band. There's no rule that says you have to have a hat band, folks. You make it what you, what you want. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to continue working on this edge and just clean that edge up. There's some parts here that uh, I was not happy with. So again, I'm angling that knife, coming across that bottom here just, just with an angle. And this will give us a much cleaner look along the, uh, the edge of that, or base of that hat. Which, as we know, is a very, very fragile piece on this carving. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put in the hat band. Now with the hat band, um, this is something that most of the time you would use a V-tool to make. So if you have a V-tool, by all means, you know, use it. There's no reason why you would uh, want to restrict yourself to a knife if you have your other tools available. And you can see I took off some of that back edge. It was sticking out a little further than I wanted. And I'm coming back in here with an angle, again, to kind of clean up and give us a better look on our hat edge. Okay. All right, for the brim, let's just pencil in a line. I'm sorry, it's the hat band. We will pencil in a line to give us a reference point. Before I do that, got a little bit too much material sticking up here where the hat band will be. Remember, shaping is so important before you cut in your details. So spend the time and shape the piece first. Um, you'll save yourself a lot of time in the end, and you'll save yourself from doing extra work. All right. Kind of scooping that right there. Checking out my shape. One more spot right there. Okay. For the hat band, just going to pencil in a line and let the line sort of follow along the slope of the hat, okay? This will be the bottom edge of our hat band. Of course, we'll also have a top edge to it. So we're just going to come in here and make a stop cut. Go all the way around the bottom edge of that hat band. And again, take your time. Do not get in a hurry. Be careful about putting your thumb onto the brim of your hat. Remember, that's kind of fragile there, and you do not want to break that off. I'm going to rock my knife as I got here to the front and then bring it over here. Okay. So now all we're going to do is kind of cut up to our stop cut. 
just like that. Again, we're, we're making shadows here. And just like before, you can put the tip of your knife under there and bring it around. If that's the method that you prefer, use that method. Otherwise, you just take your blade and cut up to that stop cut. And you work your way around. Now, like I said, most folks would do this with a V-tool. You can do it very quickly and easily with a V-tool. Um, they're great for following lines and, and putting in shadows, making these kinds of cuts and adding these shapes. If you don't have a V-tool yet, it's one of the basic tools that I would recommend for anyone who's starting out. Um, I know a lot of people will have three V tools, one large, one medium, and one small. And with those three V tools, you can do a lot. Um, a lot of people would have that same number of gouges, right? One large, medium, and small. Of course, now gouges have different sweeps to them. You'll want to research that kind of before you go ahead and invest money in a lot of different gouges. All right, we've got the bottom line in there. I'm going to come up maybe, I don't know, quarter of an inch. It's not exact. And with a glove on, <laughs> uh, my line may not be straight. But I want to make it look like a hat band, right? Just follow that around like we did on the bottom edge. And normally, yeah, it would take more time to sort of clean up some of these cuts. But in the interest of getting us through this today, um, I'm going to clean up some of this stuff later. So just like before, we're going to make that stop cut, put the tip in there. Get the thumb off of the brim. And just bring that around. Remember, if you get to a spot that has somewhat of a corner, just rock your knife a little bit. Get the tip back in, move along. Now, after we cut in this uh, hat band here, I'll kind of talk you through the steps, show you the products and the paints, the colors that I used uh, to paint snowman number one. All right. Now we've had our stop cut uh, all set to go. Next thing to do is just sort of come along underneath that with the tip of our blade and again, we're creating some shadows, some depth, to show where that hat band will live on our snowman, okay? Just come back at it. I want to thank all the people who have subscribed to the channel so far. As I've mentioned, I'll be giving away Snowman number one, uh, doing a random, random character generator to uh, to pick out the subscriber who will win, and then I'll be sending Snowman number one on his way. 
If you are not the person who wins snowman number one, never fear. Every 90 days, I'll be giving away one of my carvings to a subscriber. Um, so if you're already subscribed, your name is in there. Thank you very much for subscribing. Please tell your friends. Okay, so we've got the hat band cut into our, our, uh, our hat now. Sometimes you know I can use this glove to get fuzzies off because of the texture of it. So, yeah, there's some cleanup still left to do. And I'm going to talk you through now the steps that I would use to go ahead and finish off this carving. The painting and all the other steps, okay? So, sometimes I can't help myself from cleaning up some of these cuts. Okay. All right, so <laughs> first thing I would do is wood burn. Now, for the wood burning, you know, you, you would get yourself a wood burning pen if you don't have a wood burner. That's okay. It's all right. Plenty of people finish their carvings and paint them without any wood burner. With the wood burner, I would come around and burn around the top edge of the hat band and then the bottom edge of the hat band. I would burn in between the bottom of the hat and the head. Then I would come down, burn around all the way around the top edge of the scarf, go back, burn all the way around the bottom edge of the scarf, come around the sides of the knot, and even across this part where we put in this little fold. I would not burn the mouth, okay? That's me. I would not burn um, these eyes either. Okay, so then I would come down here and burn along the edge of the scarf hanging down. I would burn this piece that creates the depth between the two pieces here. And then I would burn in the tassels, the fringe at the bottom. That would be the wood burning that I would do. After that, I would paint. And the paints that I used for this uh, snowman number one, I'll show you exactly what they are. Let me just move some stuff out of the way and grab them. So, with the body of the snowman, it's basically white. No special fancy white. This is just a craft, craft smart white. And I use that for the body. Just all over. All right. For the hat, I use raw sienna. And what that does, it's a great color because it gives you this look, almost like a, a leather kind of a look. So this is the one I use. It's folk art. Raw Sienna. So uh, that's uh, it's a great color to use. For the band, you can see it's gray. On that, I use Ceram Coat. It's called Sand Dune. And that's the gray color that you see on the hat band. Uh, the little designs on top of that I'll show you were made with paint pens. So the ones that I use, um, this is called Pasca. These are acrylic paints. You get a set of 12 different colors here. And let me just show you the tip and what the tips look like. These, these acrylic paint pens come in different styles and sizes. Some of them have larger tips than others. So this is the one that I have. I don't know if there's a size marked on the package. Um, yeah, I don't don't see that there but when you shop you know you can look and see uh, and these are acrylic paints just like the paints in the tube so I use the paint pens to come in here and make the little design on the hat band I use the black paint pen to make the pupils for his eyes and then with the white I just use a toothpick with a little bit of white paint and make the little dot now, if you don't have a paint pen, you can use a toothpick to make the black pupils. You just take one end of your toothpick and cut it off 
cut the pointed end off so you have a larger rounded piece and you can use that. You can use brushes, of course. Okay, continuing with the paint. For the scarf, I used what's called Holiday Red. This is Craftsmart again. And uh, you can see the name here, Holiday Red. And then the blue lines that you see on the scarf, those were from a paint pen. Just went in and put some stripes on there. The nose, for that carrot nose, I used Folk Art. It's called Hot Saffron. It's a pretty bright orange color. Uh, but you could use any orange color, right? And then to create some shadows all over this Santa, or Santa, it's a snowman, I used Americana Deep Midnight Blue. And the, you have to water this down a lot. You want barely any color. And then you take your deep midnight blue and you make some little shadows so you can see it here I put some shadow here in this mouth right I did not wood burn this mouth because that would that would be too dark I made very subtle shadows with midnight blue I also used it around the top edge and bottom edge of the scarf and around the outside I put a little bit of it on the eyes uh, in the sockets right here just to give some shadow and a little bit of depth. I also put just a touch of it underneath the nose to put a shadow under there. Um, so go light with that. Water it down. Make sure you're not putting too much on at once. After it's painted, I'll let that sit probably two or three days just to let the paint cure. And then I'll go ahead and dip it or paint on Minwax 209 wood finish. This is a penetrating wood stain. And then right after I put in or put on the, the stain, I came back on top of that with Howard Feed and Wax. And I believe what that did is it helped the penetrating wood stain, I think, helped to uh, bring some of the Feed and Wax into that wood grain and into the, uh, the color on that snowman. A couple of things you should know. With this 209, you know, it has some, you know, heavy-duty chemicals in there. Make sure you read the instructions. Use it in a ventilated area. To me, it has a smell similar to gasoline, sort of a petroleum kind of a scent to it. It does dissipate over time. Um, when you put it in your carving, I would say it takes about a month before that, that smell really dissipates. So just know that. Whether you want to use it or not, it's up to you. A lot of people use boiled linseed oil, which also has some hazards to it. Um, make your choices. You can use none or all. So putting on the stain followed immediately with the feed and wax. I let that cure for a few days. And then the last thing I did was apply this water-based polycrylic protective finish. Um, this is an 8-ounce can. I really like this a lot. I used to use polyurethane. This water-based um, costs a little bit more, but I'll tell you, uh, to me it's worth it. It has no smell. It cleans up with water and um, it leaves a, a matte finish. So I, I recommend that a lot. And that is really the last step. After you've put on your polyacrylic, you can always go back and add more feed and wax if you want to, but it's not necessary. Um, want to let you know um, coming up, I'm going to have a video on how you can enhance your carving experience. This way, uh, tool wrap that I use here is fantastic. And I'm going to do a, a little bit of a demo, show you how and what I use and how I apply it and tell you some of the benefits that you can experience as well. And it's probably, I don't know, three or four bucks. And uh, the benefit is great. Thanks again, everyone. We'll see you next time.